Hey folks, welcome to Digimento Education. This is Analog Devices and Circuits Lecture 5. Hopefully you must have gone through all the lectures that I covered before and well versed with the concepts that I separately marked as important and other, other concepts too. If you are not well versed with the basics of what basics what I taught you in the last four lectures you won't be able to solve a question in the examination that you will encounter so it's highly recommended that you basically be well versed with the concepts that we co that I covered in the last lectures okay so if you really like the video please hit the like button share and subscribe to our channel and write down your comments below in the comment section okay so let's start with the with today's lecture the first topic of discussion we in the last lecture we ended our discussion with uh, with the with the introduction to the bridge rectifiers there I taught you uh, the, there, I, uh, there I described you about the waveforms of uh, the bridge rectifier it's basically a half is basically a full wave rectifier and also described you about uh, the operations of uh, all four diodes in uh, in, in different intervals okay now in this class we in this lecture we will we shall discuss about we shall basically analyze the bridge rectifier let's perform the analysis analysis of bridge rectifier analysis of bridge rectifier the first that we shall discuss is about the current so you don't need you don't uh, in this layer I'm not going to uh, write the derivation of all the points that we discussed earlier because you already know how we have to derive uh, th uh, them so your output current I is basically equal to I m sine alpha where this is uh, when alpha is basically pi and 0 and is also equal to minus I m sine alpha when alpha varies varies between pi and 2 pi here that you should make a point that i m is equal to v m by 2 r f plus r l okay this is very very important here uh, up till uh, up to uh, up to center tight full wave rectifier and half wave rectifiers uh, we discussed uh, when we wrote the formula of i m it used to be v m by r f plus r l but in this case this form this expression incorporates 2 RF because it require because it incorporates two diodes in series connected in series second one was IDC since it's a full wave rectifier it will be equal to 2 IM by pi then we have IRMS the total RMS current is equal to IM by root 2 because it's basically a full wave rectifier had it been in a half wave rectifier it, it would be IM by 2 and that would be im by pi now fourth one fourth point i rms dash ims prime is a total rms ac current is equal to i rms square minus i dc square okay fifth one since it's a full wave rectifier so we have a ripple factor of 0 0.483 it won't change okay we have then sixth point pi input power input average input power is equal to i rms square into 2 rf 2 rf plus rl and it used to be rf plus rl in the case of half uh, center tight full wave rectifier and half wave rectifier that's one more distinction that's one more distinction you have then percentage efficiency percentage efficiency is again will remain uh, will be equal to 81 percent maximum so it will be equal to 81 rl divided by 2 rf plus rl percentage okay this is also one more distinction eighth point v diode dc now what is the diode voltage what the diode voltage used to be in the case of center tight full rectifier it used to be minus 2 im uh, minus 2 vm by pi 
Now in this case, there is one, there is, it is one distinction. It is equal to minus v m by pi. There is one more distinction, okay? But when we discuss about v d c n l, it is equal to two v m by pi, and it was also two v m by pi in the case of center tap full wave rectifier, okay? Now in uh, v diode d c, v diode d c. In case of bridge rectifier, it is minus V m by pi, but it used to be minus two V m by pi in case of your full wave center tap full wave rectifier. Okay, tenth point V D C F L is I D C into R L, or it is equal to V D C N L minus I D C into R, where this is equal to two V m by pi minus I D C into two R F. Here, this is also one uh, one distinct uh, one point of distinction. Here, R is equal to two R F. R S W is not considered. Why are we not considering? Because there will not be any DC power dissipation across the secondary winding of the transformer. Because both voltage and current are AC in nature. Across the secondary winding, so there will not be any DC power dissipation across the secondary winding of the transformer. As I already show you, as I already showed you in the last lecture, that the current which is flowing across the secondary winding is purely AC because it is the current across this across the secondary winding is bidirectional. That's why we shall not consider RSW, which is the Uh, which, which represents the DC power dissipation across the secondary winding. So we are not going to consider that. It's a one major point of distinction. Okay. So VDC, or you can say VDC secondary winding should be equal to zero, as in this case. Okay. So this is the tenth point of discussion. Now eleventh is percentage regulation. Percentage regulation. Will be equal to R upon R L into hundred percent. It's also different. It's also restriction where R in this case is two R F. Okay. Now twelfth, you have Thevenin equivalent circuit. V Thevenin will be equal to two V M by pi, two V M by pi, and R Thevenin is equal to R, which is basically equal to two R F. Okay. Thirteen, and this is the important point. The PIV in this case is equal to VM, and it was two VM in the case of center tap full wave rectifier. This is a major advantage of using a bridge rectifier. Major advantage. Okay, major advantage. And it was used to, and it was used to be two VM in the case of. Now, fourteenth point is basically. The form factor is 1.11. Okay, in this case, it will remain the same. Form factor is 1.11. In a half wave rectifier, the form factor was 1.57, and ripple factor was 1.21. Okay, and uh, in case of your center tap full wave rectifier, your form factor was 1.11, and ripple factor was 0.483. Again, it will remain the same in the case of bridge rectifier. Then we have fifteenth point of discussion: the frequency of output. Frequency of output is again two F naught in this case, or you can say a ripple frequency. Ripple frequency is two F naught is not equal to fundamental frequency. Fundamental frequency is f naught, so it does it is not equal to output frequency or ripple frequency is two f naught. It's not equal to fundamental frequency. Sixteenth point is angle of conduction. Angle of conduction. Conduction. This is equal to three sixty degree for ideal diode. And three sixty minus uh, four theta. For non-ideal diode, and this is the this is the same case. This is the same case in the, but this is uh, this is also same for uh, center tap full wave rectifier as we discussed earlier. Where, ha, huh, 
the major point of discussion the major point of difference is here is theta theta will be equal to sine inverse 2 2 v gamma by vm this is important point here because two diodes are connected in series so their cut in voltages will will add up and that net cut in voltage will be equal to 2 v gamma but uh, in the pre, in the center of that four wave rectifier your uh, theta was sine inverse of v gamma by v, vm this is again a point of distinction okay and 17 point is basically the transformer utilization factor it is 0 0.81 into rl divided by 2 rf plus rl okay this is the transformer utilization factor but in the center tight full wave rectifier it was 0.57 with respect to the secondary winding and 0.81 with respect to the primary winding where your net where, uh, uh, so your net uh, transformer utilization factor was equal to 0 0.69 rl by rf plus rl in the case of center tight full wave rectifier but in the case of uh, full wave in the case of bridge rectifier it is equal to 0.81 rl by 2 rf plus rl okay uh, that is with respect to secondary winding and primary winding okay so in the full wave rectifier in the center tight full wave rectifier it was uh, 0.57 with respect to the secondary winding and 0.81 with respect to the primary winding net was 0 0.69 which is the average one but in this case transformer utilization factor for both secondary winding and primary winding is 0 0.81 rl by 2 rf plus rl okay so average will be equal to 0 0.81 now let's discuss about advantages advantages of a bridge rectifier so it basically has a smaller piv which you can see is equal to vm second one it does not require it does not require center tab transformer center tab transformer which is basically large which basically requires a, uh, a lot of space center tab transformer requires a lot of space okay the space requirement basically increase in case of your center tab full wave rectifier you have a greater greater transformer utilization factor dc output power upon input ac power rating okay fourth one is bridge rectifier bridge rectifier can be used can be used as high voltage rectifier also so why is this so because uh, uh, center tight full wave rectifier and your half wave rectifier are basically low voltage rectifiers because diode cannot bear a greater amount of greater amount of voltage applied across it across across them across okay so if two 220 volt AC is directly applied without using the transformer directly applied without using the transformer across the diode bridge across diode bridge then what would happen let's say uh, we directly apply without using the transformer we directly apply the voltage let's say this is if you directly apply 220 volt rms value so what you will get piv what will be your piv peak inverse voltage will be equal to vm vm will be equal to 220 into root 2 220 into root 2 which is nearly equal to 311 volts okay so vo piv will be equal to vm vm in this case will be equal this is this is 220 volt rms value so 220 into root 2 will give you the peak value will be equal to 311 volts okay so you require a diode so you require a diode with piv greater than 311 volts sorry not piv it's breakdown voltage with the breakdown voltage 
breakdown voltage greater than 311 volts so this much you at least you require okay now let's have a look at this particular example uh, what does this question say let's have a look at that so 2 to 240 volt AC is applied to a bridge rectifier if load resistance is 10 kilo ohm this is RL calculate DC load current and voltage 2 to 40 volt AC voltage is given by default we are considering it to be since the turns ratio is not given by default we are considering to be it is directly it is uh, present at the input at uh, the secondary winding of the transformer 2 to 240 volt AU is given this is by default this is an RMS value 240 so we can find your VM VM will be equal to 240 into root 2 volts so VM will be equal to 14 root 2 which is nearly equal to 339.4 volts Okay, the first question is asked is DC load current DC load current so I DC will be equal to 2 I M by pi so for that we require I M I M will be equal to V M by 2 R F plus R L so V M in this case is equal to 339.4 upon 2 R F now in this case nothing is uh, basically told about nothing is given about uh, about the diode so we are by default considering it to be equal to zero that is it is an ideal diode and RL is 10 kilo ohm so it is 10 kilo ohm so it will be equal to 33.94 milliampere by default we are considering it uh, to be a uh, ideal diode because nothing is given about the diode now voltage so your VDC voltage DC voltage we are by default finding out VDC FL it is IDC into RL Okay. now IDC will be so what will be your IDC then it is 2 into 33.94 by pi and this comes out to be equal to 21.6 milliampere so IDC will be equal to 21.6 milliampere into RL is given as 10 kilo ohm and this comes out to be 216 volts okay now second option second question says asked to find out RMS load current and voltage so what is the RMS load current IRMS will be equal to IM by root 2 ok IM by root 2 IM what is IM 33.94 upon square root 2 is equal to 24 milliampere ok and voltage RMS voltage will be equal to VRMS is equal to IRMS into RL Okay, it is 24 milliampere into 10 kilo ohm. It comes out to be 240 volts. Okay, and what will be your PIV? PIV is equal to VM. Is nothing but 339.4 volts. So this is how you solve the questions related to the rectifiers. Okay. Now let's have a look at the at another question. Uh, its question says determine the output voltage waveform for the circuit shown below and calculate the DC level of the output voltage and required PIV for each diode okay so in this case nothing is given about the diode so we are by default considering it to be a, a, a an ideal diode which basically acts as open circuited and short circuited when reverse bias and forward bias respectively this is the waveform of the input voltage which is when which is applied to it now we have to we have to solve it by considering two different cases here okay so for the positive half cycle for this per for this positive half cycle so let's let's solve it so for uh, positive positive half cycle so what do we have for the positive half cycle vi is positive since vi is positive your diode d2 will be forward biased which means that it will be short circuited and your diode d1 will be reverse biased so from here we can conclude that diode d2 is forward biased which means that it will be short circuited and d1 is a reverse biased which means that it is open circuited okay so since vi is positive for the positive half cycle this will be short circuited and this will be reverse biased and this will be open circuited so your net circuit would look something like this your net circuit will look something like this this will be short circuited okay your uh, this is VO 
so your circuit would look something like this if you just draw it more systematically to make it more clearer to you this is like this okay this is 2k this is 2k and this is 2k this is uh, plus minus this is the output voltage vo and this is plus minus vi so from here you can easily see by applying the voltage divider by applying the voltage divider we get vo as for the first case we get vo as vi by 2 this is 5 sin omega t yeah or 5 sin alpha so this will be your vo for the positive half cycle okay now let's move on to the for the negative half cycle for the negative half cycle now i already told you about uh, the conventions that you need to follow either you change the sign or change the polarity do not change both okay now i am keeping the polarity constant okay so when it is negative for the negative half cycle your diode d1 will be forward biased and d2 will be reverse biased so d1 is forward biased which means that it will be short circuited and d2 is a reverse biased this will mean that it will be open circuited these all are approximate approxi approximate uh, analysis of the circuit so your circuit would look something like this this is short, short circuited this is vo this will be open circuited okay this is 2k 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 plus minus vo so if you apply the voltage divider if you apply the voltage divider on this thing you get vo as minus vi by 2 because the polarities are different this is plus minus this is minus plus okay this is minus plus it will equal to minus vi by 2 this will be equal to minus 5 sin omega t so this is how it looks so for vo will be equal to this so we can conclude that vot will be equal to 5 sin alpha for alpha lying between 0 and pi and minus 5 sin alpha for alpha lying between pi and 2 pi this again a, a full wave rectifier okay it's just like a full wave rectifier and now it is required to find out the dc level of the output voltage how can we find that out now v dc v dc will be equal to since it is full wave rectifier it should be equal to 2 vm by pi and this will be equal to 2 into 5 by pi this is equal to 10 by pi is the answer or you can easily calculate by applicate by applying the formula okay so or you can see you can easily find it out by vdc will be equal to 1 by since it is periodic with a period of pi 0 to pi 5 sin alpha d alpha and this comes out to be uh, 10 by pi okay this is how it goes because this is periodic with a period of pi so we will so we will only consider that particular period now piv piv is peak inverse voltage so what is the average what is the voltage that is across the diode when it is reverse biased so when we consider that let's say diode, let's say we are cons let's say consider uh, diode d2 is reverse biased so then let's say uh, this will be short circuited this diode will be short circuited this is diode and this will be reverse biased okay so if we just see this is 2k 2k and this is 2k now when uh, when would this happen this is minus 10 volt because we have to consider vm in this case so that 10 volt will appear across this thing so we can say piv will be equal to 5 volt piv will be equal to 5 volt because 10 volt will divide equally among these two and what is the voltage what uh, and the voltage that would appear across this 2 kilo ohm will also appear across the diode okay this is the diode so piv will be equal to 5 volt because let's say because uh, it depends upon vm so we are taking it uh, vm is equal to 10 volts and uh, the voltage that would appear is minus 10 volt and minus 10 volt will appear across the diode and we take the magnitude of that minus 5 uh, 5 volt is going to be the piv okay understood okay folks now let's move on to the discussion 
now since uh, so far we have uh, basically used the rectifiers in order to rectify the ac signal to get the dc output in order to uh, in order to basically uh, drive the dc devices that are connected to our uh, connected in our houses so since but, but unfortunately we were getting uh, ripples a hell lot of ripples we have to eliminate uh, eliminate those and we want a steady output a smooth output and one step forward to it we basically are uh, now going to we apply the filters across the rectifiers filters will help us out in uh, in making uh, in smoothening the rippled dc output that we get that we got in the rectifiers that's the basic usage of uh, filters so in this now let's discuss about filters okay let me write some theory behind the filter so that it would make it uh, it would impart more credibility to your to you and would make you able to understand very well about why are why are we using filters uh, at the output of the rectifiers okay so if the if uh, if uh, it is a frequency select so it's basically what is a filter it is basically it is a frequency selective is basically a frequency selective network which passes a desired desired range of frequencies desired range of frequencies and eliminates and eliminates unwanted unwanted frequencies frequencies filter is used in a power supply is used in a power supply power supply to remove ac component component present at the output of a rectifier okay this is the main purpose of using filters now filter should remove frequencies frequencies omega naught 2 omega naught 4 omega naught etc in half wave rectifier and 2 omega naught 4 omega naught etc in full wave rectifier also if in power supply in power supply filters consist of large capacitors so that is microfarad to millifarad and large inductors milli henry because that would basically enable us to get the smooth output dc because the time discharging time constant will be very very high so we shall be able to extract the pure dc out of the rectif out of the rectified signal okay so that's why we use a large capacitors or large inductors for that purpose for that particular purpose okay now let's discuss about the capacitive filters what are the capacitive filters so we have capacitive filters what are the usage of uh, what are the properties behind using what are the important points behind using and uh, the capacitive filters okay so ac component ac component can be removed 
by connecting by connecting a capacitor capacitor in parallel to load resistance rl so here we have a rectifier here we have a rectifier this is the ac power and we connect a capacitor large capacitor in parallel to resistance rl since capacitors are large the discharging time constant is also large so for this purpose so capacitor should be chosen such that in such a way that its reactance is much smaller than rl which means that mod xc should be less very less than rl this is important point here because the current here is both the combination of iac plus idc if the reactance is smaller across uh, reactance of this capacitor is smaller Uh, most of the ac current will flow through the capacitor and will not basically pass through the resistance rl because since this reactance is smaller we know that the current always chooses a less resistive path less less reactive path so if reactance is very very small compared to rl most of the ac current will pass through the capacitance capacitor and will very small percentage of current ac current will pass through resistance rl that's why we use that's why we all, always take mod xc less than very very less than rl where xc is equals to 1 by omega not c for half wave rectifier and is equal to 1 by 2 omega not c for full wave rectifier because the funda the ripple frequency is omega not in case of half wave rectifier and is equal to 2 omega not in the case of full wave rectifier and both of them should be very very less than rl this is a major point that you should know that's why we use uh, the capacitor in parallel to load resistance rl okay this is how we use uh, the capacitive filters in this case so let me write some points here so that it is more clearer to you and please make a note of these points so capacitor and rl are form current divider yes okay your inductor your inductor and rl form voltage divider and capacitor and rl form a current divider okay output current output current of rectifier rectifier is combination of of both ac and dc okay now ac component i ac flows flows almost through capacitor because its reactance is smaller and negligible and negligible ac flows through rl because we know that mod xc is very very less than rl understood thus capacitor reduces flow of of ac through rl that's the main purpose of using capacitor filter dc component dc component idc flows through rl because 
capacitor blocks DC or it acts as open circuited at DC because omega naught for a DC is equal to 0 and 1 by omega naught will be equal to infinity and for that's why for uh, 1 by 0 it will be equal to infinity and that's why for the DC current uh, the capacitor basically acts as open circuited resistance is very reactance is very very high for that for DC current that's why it the blocks the DC and uh, as you also uh, as you will also see that when we then we sh then we sh when we shall discuss about the amplifiers and we and the, when we when we would for, for perform the dc and ac analysis and when we perform the dc analysis you will see the large capacitors basically are uh, large capacitors because all the capacitors are uh, considered to be open circuited for the dc analysis okay that's the main reason behind so all of the DC current will flow through the resistance RL, not flowing through uh, the capacitor. Okay. Now uh, let's discuss about the design of a half-wave rectifier with the capacitor filter. Okay. So we have the half-wave half-wave rectifier half-wave rectifier with capacitor capacitive filter okay now the circuit looks something like this this is very very important you should know we use a step down transformer again because your rectifier is basically a low voltage rectifier and this is n1 is to n2 okay this is a diode that we already discussed now this up to this it was basically the original rectifier that we discussed earlier now here it would basically be RL and here we have a capacitor C okay this is capacitor C and RL the orientation can be uh, vice versa as well you can connect capacitor here in RLN since both are in parallel so it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter this is AC supply this is pure AC supply plus minus this is diode D and uh, this is basically nothing but VI okay we are taking the same convention this is VO okay and this is also equal to VC VO will be will be equal to VC now let's basically carefully discuss let's be carefully discuss about the waveform and the output variation since the capacitor is large enough now let's discuss about the output variation okay let me discuss about that let's draw the input waveform okay this is basically let's say it is vi and this is basically your t okay so this is vm this is minus vm understood now let me use another color to to basically describe the output variation in the circuit so when let's say when vi is positive when vi is positive then diode d will be forward biased and the capacitor will charge okay capacitor will charge what would be the voltage across the capacitor or you can say the output voltage we are considering the output voltage equal to the capacitor voltage so when vi is basically positive the capacitor is charging vo will follow vi because they are connected in parallel vi will appear across the capacitor so as your vi is changing your capacitor voltage or the output voltage will follow vi up to here okay your this is basically with blue I am representing VO is equal to VC VO is equal to VC now what would happen when VI basically just becomes negative VI starts to decrease now VI is basically decreasing start uh, starts decreasing as VI starts decreasing since what would happen what would then uh, what would happen then so when VI is positive when VI is basically positive your uh, output so VO will be so this diode will be forward biased and uh, VO will basically follow follow VI because that is in parallel with VI okay now 
since uh, since uh, at this point after this particular point after this particular point what would happen your vi will become less than vi would become less than vc because the capacitor voltage here will be somewhat like this and vi becomes less than vc vi becomes less than vc and this diode since vi is less than vc or vo the out this diode will be reverse biased diode will be reverse biased this will be open circuited your diode will be open circuited and then your capacitor starts discharging through rl so capacitor starts discharging through rl so the discharging process will be will look something like this okay discharging will look something like this so you what would happen when we at this part after this particular point your vc or the output voltage becomes greater than vi or vi just becomes less than your vc your diode d becomes reverse bias and starts discharging through resistance rl okay after this particular point your vi becomes vi again becomes greater than vc okay so this uh, vi again becomes greater than vc it will be short circuited it will be forward biased so the vo output voltage will again follow your vi so i am marking this thing as uh, vo is equal to vc and this again after this particular point your vi become becomes less than vc so the capacitor starts discharging like this and this process continues okay this process continues this is basically your let's say t1 and uh, this is basically uh, basically let's say this is t2 and this is let's say it is t3 this time is a t discharge this time is up to t is discharge up to this particular point is t discharge and this time interval this time interval it is t charge so this is how it basically follows okay this will be the dc output since again again it basically consists of uh, ripples then we shall again pass it through the reg voltage regulator okay uh, this is the thing so this is the dec decrease so uh, this this so let me just quickly denote one more point one more voltage here which is important to note down this potential this potential is basically equal to vm minus vr vr is ripple voltage okay okay folks i am uh, stopping this lecture here i will soon uh, I, in the next lecture i will discuss uh, exhaustively about this half wave rectifier design with the, the capacitor connected in parallel with resistance rl and further analysis i will continue in the next lecture till then please go through all the uh, go through this lecture very carefully and try to understand each and every nuance of uh, the lecture that i covered and be well versed with the concept that i mark separately as important and uh, hopefully you must be doing good and please like like this video give a thumbs up share and subscribe to our channel and write down your comments below in the comment section thank you very much